Good evening. We welcome you to another good news broadcast. It's good to be back this week. We pray that you've had a good week this week. Uh, it's good to know the Lord. Good to be able to rejoice in, in the goodness. And we have uh, Donna and Lonnie with us tonight. Cindy's with us tonight. They're going to be ministering to you in song. And we're just excited about being here. Uh, we have a few prayer requests, and then we're going to let them bring you a song. Uh, Barbara Gillens from over in Taylorsville needs prayer. Uh, Brother Gilbert Scott that sings here on the uh, second Saturday night, I mean third Saturday night, <laughs> it was here last Saturday night. Uh, his wife Margaret is in the Fry Hospital here in Hickory. Uh, she fell and fractured her hip, so remember her in prayer. Uh, Mary Sharp from over in Olin, want to remember her in prayer and her family. And I'd like to remember Betty and Donald Johnson from Statesville and their children, also their grandchildren. Uh, Miss Betty is doing some better, and then she's had a couple bad days. But anyway, just keep lifting her up in prayer. That's, uh, that's Sister Hazel's niece. So we're going to let them bless you in a song at this time. That's a wonderful invitation because that's what we want to do is invite everyone to come and go along with us because our purpose and our intentions is that we want to make heaven our home one day. But we really don't want to go by ourselves. We want to bring you with us so we all can be together in eternity. Uh, prayer and a song for Audrey and Roy Hyatt. They requested to sing God on the Mountain. A special prayer and a song for Guy and Peggy Webb. Uh, Evelyn Chapman wants a song, and also she needs prayer. And also we want to send a prayer and a song out for Pauline Lail, and someone has requested that to remember Jimmy in prayer. So we're going to let them bring you another song at this time.
to share a thought with you and then I'll have some more prayer requests. Reading out John uh, chapter 13, it says, For they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. And said, And Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light unto the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. And he gave me a commandment that I should say what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. And whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. And I can imagine why Jesus cried. Because the praises and the, and the concern was all toward man and not toward God. So let's try to do better. Let's try to give thanks and give our praises unto the Lord because he's worthy of our praises. And I know he is hurting his spirit when we fail to give him honor and glory and we give all the honor to man. We're going to ask you to uh, remember Barbara Griffin and Lillian Huffman. They both need prayer. Uh, I want to give you an update on Lisa Morrell. She had sur her surgery went good and she is at home and we praise God for that. Karen from Concord wants prayer in a song. Susan and Michael, uh, prayer for salvation. John Stevenson, prayer. Mary and family needs prayer. Bonnie and Michael Treadway needs prayer and wants Cindy to sing Standing on the Rock. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know, but uh, I don't know what she's going to sing. But anyway, uh, Donald and Gladys Hartster is uh, celebrating their 67th anniversary, and they want a song. We're going to go ahead and let them bring you a song this time. Keep one. 
Prayer for Bryce Harrington and prayer for Billy Baird. They both have cancer. Shirley Tilly needs prayer for Jason. Pray for Judy Stinnett and they will request a song. Want to remember prayer for the Dixie's family. Uh, she passed away and have requested the song Little David. Want to pray for Ernest and Mary Earp. Pray for a family who has lost loved ones and prayer for, fam for the family of Eugene Byers. He passed away this week. And also a prayer and a song for Bursell Bowers. Uh, Ivanel Hicks needs prayer. The Buff family and Jean Kirksey needs prayer. Ralph and Ruth Settlemeyer uh, needs prayer. Uh, home hospice, prayer for town of Granite Falls due to the fire this week. So let's remember uh, these requests. Uh, I think if they're ready, we're going to go ahead and uh, let them bring you a song. So you be much in prayer for them. I know they will bless you. Well, I want to thank God for saving me. And what was their names? The Treadways, wasn't it? Huh? At Bonnie and... Uh, yeah, Bonnie and Michael Treadway. Okay, they asked me to sing a song for them one night when I was answering the phone, and I, I forget by the time I get from up, back there up here what I'm supposed to do. And I don't know if this is what you're uh, wanting me to sing or not, but actually this is what I've been singing at work and thinking that I'm going to do it tonight. So I guess that was God telling me, go for it. But I haven't done it in a while, so you pray for me. Yes. 
One thing for sure, I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easy way. I stand right square on my feet. I throw my head in the air and I look him straight in the eye and I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. The devil, he will tempt you and pull you away with strife. He'll make you sick in body, even try to take your life. Put past your trust in Jesus and say, Lord, I've had enough. The Lord will say, move over Satan, she's got her mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easy way, I stand right square on my feet. I throw my head in the air and I look him straight in the eye and I say, My foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. <coughs> Now Job was a man who was tempted in every way. The devil took his family, he laid sick night and day. His wife, she came a saying, curse God, you've had enough. He said, you talk like a foolish woman, I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up though i walk through the lonely valley though i drink from the bitter cup when the devil comes a knocking showing me an easy way i throw my head in the feet i throw my head in the air and i look him straight in the eye and i say my Foots on the rock and my mind's made up. I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes a knocking, showing me an easy way. I stand right square on my feet, I throw my head in the air and I look him straight in the eye and I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. We gotta have our mind made up and we gotta have our foot on the rock. If we don't, we're gonna go down in sinking sand and I'm afraid that there's some people who are on sinking sand and don't realize it, and some know they're on sinking sand. So I'm just gonna encourage you to get on the rock, get your foot on the rock, get your mind made up uh, to, to make it to heaven. Uh, we only have one on the prayer lines tonight, so just bear with us and we'll get to you just as soon as we can with your prayer request. I uh, wanna remember Jackie Patterson in prayer. Uh, Tyler, Mickey, Marthy, uh, Martha, Goolidge uh, needs prayer. Prayer for Roy and Audrey Hyatt, uh, health issues. Donald, Lois, Jonathan, and Nikki needs prayer for health. And also a listener has called in and is requesting prayer. Let me also encourage you to use our email address, the good news program 14 at gmail.com. There you can send in your prayer request 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And feel free to do that because uh, I, I check the emails every day and, and we will uh, 
honor your request and we'll sure pray about them. Our church will pray about them and, and the people here will be praying about your, your needs and your requests. Uh, if they're ready, I think we're going to go ahead and let them bless you in another song. You preach much in prayer for them. Ask them to sing that song again because you know there's a lot there's a lot of people who are sick a lot of people in need a lot of people's lost we can't touch him physically like the woman did but we can touch him by faith but I want you to reach out by your faith tonight I want you to reach out to him when they sing this song again you know he's passing by He's passing by this very moment to touch your body, to heal you. I need healing. I've had, I've had 
six weeks, seven weeks of turmoil. But I'm doing better because I know how to reach out by faith and touch him and he'll touch you. Just reach out to him. I, I just I feel it in my spirit. I'm just rejoicing on the inside. I might cry a little bit. But you know, I know what this song is about. And I know you're out there watching this broadcast and you're in need tonight. And it's not all about your physical condition. It's about your soul. You, you're crying out in your soul. You're lonely and you're hurt and you're, you're in a mass, uh, a place of, un, you're, you're, you're just not stable in your decisions and you're trying to find an answer to your problems, well, Jesus, Jesus is your answer. And you reach out and touch him as they sing this song again. Holy Ghost power is in this place. Now I just want to go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, reach out, Father, to that one that's crying out to you right now. Oh, mighty God, touch that one that's so near eternity. It's lost and undone and don't know you as a personal Savior. But God, let this be the day that you pass by and they reach out and they touch you and they find hope in their life. And Father, we ask you, Lord, to remember all these precious requests, Lord, all these that are sick, all these that are facing 
sorrow and heartache. We'd ask you, Lord, to touch them and encourage them, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Prayer for Margaret Milton. Also a song. Prayer for Billy Rash. Prayer for Garrett, has high blood pressure. Prayer for Dale Troutman, who has cancer. Prayer for Ruth and Wink and a song, Jesus Hold My Hand. Uh, prayer, Johnny Atwell and Paula Taylor sing God on the Mountain for Virginia Bishop. Uh, Reba Stan, prayer, she fell and broke her hip. And again, let me remind you also about Brother Gilbert's wife, Margaret Scott. She's here in Fry Hospital. She's fractured her hip also, she fell. Uh, prayer for Lucille Baker had a stroke, uh, Wayne Holscloth, Jean Holscloth. Uh, Wayne has cancer, Jean has been bitten by a spider. Uh, prayer for a family of Dr. Robert Abbott, a uh, family, uh, I think the mom died, so remember remember this, this family in prayer, if you will. Uh, I'm gonna let them bring you another song, then we're gonna give out the names of those who have given on the broadcast this week.
We want to send a great big thank you out to all of you who have gave uh, donations to this broadcast because without you we wouldn't be able to be here and we appreciate what you do and, and to help us to be here and these are the ones who have given on the broadcast this week uh, we have a listener from Lincolnton uh, Jerry from Charlotte we have Richard from Granite Falls and Amanda and family from Bessemer City has given uh, a donation in memory of, of Hazel Varner, Sister Hazel, and God bless you, Amanda. Amanda and Bryant came to Baptist Hospital in Winston-Salem when Pastor, uh, Sister Hazel was there to see her, and I want to say thank you, Amanda, to you and your family, and you'll always be remembered. Uh, Frank from Kannapolis, uh, we have Viviline Cox from Hickory. Uh, God bless you, Viviline. Uh, Mary from Drexel. Paul and Judith from Shelby. We have Doris from Charlotte. We have Kevin and Hilda Hubbard from the Trading Post Produce in Taylorsville. We thank you for your donation. Robert and Jeannie from Monroe and Jewel from Mint Hill, South Carolina. Also, we wanna thank C&J Auto Sales. Uh, from up in Granite Falls, or Hudson rather, I'm sorry. Uh, that's James Teague. And I ask you to remember his father, James Teague Sr. We went by the hospital and saw him and spent some time with him, and, and I pray that he is doing better. Uh, I don't know the status, if he's at home or, or yet, haven't heard. But anyway, remember him in prayer. You can call James at 828-728-9828, and that's C&J Auto Sales, specializing in trucks, and they've been in business since 1985. Uh, TBLG Law Group, uh, it's a North Carolina family law uh, in Charlotte. Uh, Kevin and Hilda Hubbard, that's the Trading Post uh, in Taylorsville. They're located on Highway 16 North at 184. You can call them at 828-632-4533. Also, we appreciate 4M Farms of Maiden. Uh, that's Norman Murphy and Randall Murphy. Norman is the owner. Uh, Randall is the operator. Uh, they're at uh, 2842 Phase Drive in Maiden. They have corn for sale and I'm not sure they may have hay and other things. I'm, I'm not sure, but I know that he does have corn uh, from September through December, but he told me that they had a good crop last year, so they was able to have corn all year round. Uh, you can call them at 828-464-8577. And again, thank you so much for your contributions uh, because that helps us to be here and helps us to expand the ministry. We're going to let them bring another song and then we're going to go into the ministry.
where sin or sorrow e'er can come. I long to see my Savior's face and tell the story saved by grace. Let me share this. I knew the Spirit of God was moving here strongly for, for a reason, and he doesn't do that unless there's a purpose. But Gary Johnson got saved on the phone tonight, and he needs prayer for help. So we, we praise God for that. And uh, Kathleen Van Horn needs prayer. Uh, also a prayer for a listener for healing. Prayer for Michelle Klontz's dad. Uh, Betty Crandall and wife of the wife of Keith Crandall needs prayer and prayer for Diane Curry and a song. And we, we appreciate what the Lord has done here tonight. It, it's worth it. It's worth our time. It's worth every effort that we put into this just to know that one soul has come to know the Lord. I want to go ahead and go into the Word. I know our time has just flies by when you get blessed to the Lord and the Spirit's moving. Time just, it just gets away from us. But I want to talk to you about an example. What is an example? An example is a characteristic of one of two things. It's a characteristics of good or it's characteristics of bad. It's also a pattern. And we, our nation, is when one of the worst messes that I've ever seen it in. And it's because that there has been some bad examples and we are supposed to be a nation that is a God-fearing nation. We are supposed to be a nation that all the world looks at and we are to be a pattern, an example of a godly nation, of a people who loves God. But I'm telling you what, this is the sorriest mess that I've ever seen in my lifetime of what's going on in our nation. And we expect other countries to follow us and to have a pattern after us when we have become so ungodly, so unrighteous, so wicked, and so rotten. And I'm telling you, it's time that we wake up and realize that if we're going to have a, an inspiration on anybody, we need to get right with God. Now, 1 Peter 2 and 21 says, For even unto where unto where ye call were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. God sent his son into this world to set an example for us to live by, for the whole world to live by. And some nations have not followed that, and neither is America following it. America one time followed it very closely, but now they've drifted away and gotten into some bad characteristics and some bad examples, and our, our nation is in a turmoil, and God's fixing to pour judgment and wrath out upon this nation because of those out there who are so mean and ungodly and unrighteous and unholy and think you know everything when you don't know nothing. Because if you don't know Jesus, you don't know nothing. Because Jesus is our example. That is our example example to live holy and righteous and good and do good and love one another. 1 John 2 and 6 says, He that saith he abide in him all himself also to walk even as he walked. When you study the life of Christ, the biography of Jesus Christ, he was, the, he was God. 
He was God perfectly, and he set an example for us to live by and to go by and to do by that we might be a great nation, be a great people, a people who he would be, uh, uh, I ain't going to say proud because he don't like pride, but he would be... Uh, he would be so blessed to have a people that respected him and honored him and honored one another. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, and I mean chapter 5, verse 1, 2 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Where is the love of God in our nation? We can put in our, we can put on our money in God we trust, and maybe we do trust in God. But where is the love of God? Where is the love for one another? It's bickering and biting and fighting and killing and, and doing all sorts of evil in this world toward one another. There's no, there's no mercy. There's no feelings. There's no value to life. Uh, I mean, it's no more than being an animal, being a dog. But I'm telling you, we're more than a dog. We're more than an animal. We are the, the creation of God. We are the children of God, and God wants us to love one another. And we are to follow after God, follow after Christ. Christ came and set the example for us to live by. And it's time that we get ourselves together and get ourselves straightened up and start doing the things that we're supposed to do, and God will bless our nation. We will see a change in our nation. We will see people coming together and working together because we love one another. One another. We don't, you say you love one another, you don't love one another. If you love one another, you'd help one another. You wouldn't be bickering and biting and fighting and trying to put one another down, trying to destroy somebody, trying to kill somebody, but you would be trying to get along. And that's what we need in this world today is the love of God to abound in our lives and our homes and our hearts to where we can love one another. I know in Philippians 2, 5, and 8, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was in his mind? It was in his mind to do good. It was in his mind to come and to show the world just how love was about, how much he loved the world, to manifest the, 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 his Father's love. And the Father's love was this, that he was willing to give his only begotten Son to a, a wicked and adulterous and... A generation of people who walked in darkness and all they want to do is do bad things and do evil things and hurt one another but God sent his son into this world to let us know that he loved us that he loved us enough that he sent his son Jesus to dwell amongst these heathens and to be crucified and hung on a cross and, and offer his body as a sacrifice to take away our sins so that we could walk in love and unity and fellowship one with another. You say that you love God. You say you love one another. You can't love if you don't have God in your heart. If you don't have God in your life, you don't know what love is all about. All you know is an old fleshly love, a lustful love. That's, that's the only kind of love you know. But true love comes from God above. Perfect love, which is God love, casts us out all fear. No wonder there's so much fear in the land today. So in Philippians 2, 5 and 8, he says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to the death of the cross. That's what I was just telling you about. That, that's how much God loved this world. That's how much God loved his creation. And God had sent example upon example upon example. Noah was a man that was an example of righteousness. Abraham was a man who was the uh, characteristics of righteousness and godliness and holiness under the Lord. There's many prophets, there's many people in the Word of God who carried that characteristic of, of God. But we got more people carrying characteristics of the other power, of the devil himself, Satan, Lucifer, that old serpent. All he wants to do is to lie, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and destroy the very things that God loves. And I'm telling you, 
I'm so glad that this young man, this man gave his heart to the Lord tonight because he will know what the love of God is. He will be able to love people. He will be able to help people because Jesus came into his life and Jesus has given him something worth living for. If he's sick in his body, God can heal his sickness. This is what it's all about. So in Mark chapter 10, verse 43 through 45 says, But so shall it be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That's why we have to stand here strong as ministers of gospel and minister to you and to tell you what is needed in your life, what is needed for this nation, what is needed for this world. This world and this nation gives a, needs a good old outpouring of God's Holy Ghost, conviction upon their hearts, and you be uh, let your mind be opened up to your filthiness and your nastiness and your naughtiness and your ungodliness and your unrighteousness and all your filthiness and realize that there's little children out there watching you. And your sons and your daughters are watching you, moms and dads. They're watching the life that you live. They're watching the things that you do. They listen to the things that you say. They hear you curse and use God's name in vain. That's what they're going to do. And then you want to spank them. You want to punish them for repeating something they heard from you. Shame on you. Get your life in order. Get your house in order. Straighten yourself up and turn this nation around for the glory of God. And stop lambasting and, and putting down and... and and being so ungodly and so nasty, but come together in unity and love of the Spirit of God. And let's make this nation, let's make our home, let's make our church, let's make our communities, communities that we can be proud of and, and know that God is in them. John 13, 14, 15 says, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Jesus has set the very example for all of us to follow by. And, and he requires us to do that. And if you love him, there's no problem in doing that. But first you must love him. John 13, 44 says, I new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Come on, families. Come on, people. Come on, nation. Come on. Let's start loving one another. Let's stop hating one another. Let's work together in love and unity. Let's reach out to the lost and the dying. Let's have a concern about souls that are on their way to a devil's hell. That, and, you know, we're here to rescue. They're out in the deep. They're in the, in, they're in the turmoil of the waves of sin. And their soul is at jeopardy. And we're sitting here, what are we doing? Come on, let's get on board. Let's get together and let's work for the Lord while we have time to work because night is coming and we won't be able to work. 1 John 3, 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. But we're not willing to do that. We're willing to slay, we're willing, we're willing to destroy and to put down, but we're not willing to lay down our lives for them that they might be saved and they might become a better person. When we look in the book of Romans chapter 13, or chapter 15, verses 3 through 7, And now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is reaching for unity. He wants us to come together. Let's stop all this division. Let's come together in love. Romans 15 and 7. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Colossians says in 3.13, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. That's a hard thing. That's what people's not willing to do. We got to forgive one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Come on. There's some who's made remarks. Well, I'll never forgive him. I'll die and go to hell before I forgive him. You better watch out. You better look out because I'm going to tell you something. If that's your attitude and that's the spirit that's in you, yes, you'll go to hell. But there, you don't need to go to hell. Hell was made for the devil and the fallen angels and all those. He wasn't made for us. 
Hebrews 12, 2 and 3 in closing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, depressing the shame, despising the shame, and is set down to right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Just remember tonight, in these 30 seconds we have left, we can make a change in our nation. We can make a change in our home. We can make a change in our community. We can make a change in our churches. We can make a change wherever we go if we will seek the love of God and we will turn from our evil and wicked ways and turn unto Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. If you don't read the Word of God, you'll never know the example who Christ was. But I encourage you, read that Word and follow it for the glory of God, that we may change our nation and change our place where we live. And I ask you to remember us in prayer, and we're going to let you go now. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Till next week. And I've got so much to thank. Shalom, saints. I'm Arthur Bailey, apostle and overseer of House of Israel Congregation in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Arthur Bailey Ministries International. I personally invite you and your family to join us for a new program on this station called Spirit-Filled Living. Spirit-Filled Living will be a tremendous blessing to you in your spiritual walk. So tell your family, tell your friends, even tell your enemies. They'll be glad you did. Shalom. Sundays, 9 a.m., 2.30 p.m. on WHKY Hickory. <laughs> <laughs> Thursdays, this is comedy. Wow. Oh, this is <laughs> oh, stupid me. Who's down with G.O.G.? So help me God, if you get out of line, I will take a massive steaming dump on your life. Pretty enlightening. I feel a lot of love in this room. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Thursdays in July, this is comedy.